Imagine the following sequence of reactions. You have a molecule of photosensitizer in a singlet state, and then it's photo excited. Just afterwards, it goes to the triplet state through intersection crossing, and eventually, this triplet state can just return to the ground state, another intersection crossing. Or this triplet state may interact with O2 molecule in the environment and form a singlet oxygen. How can you compute the rates for these reactions? My name is Mario Barbati and this is the second stay-at-home talk with light and molecules. Today I'm going to talk about the singlet oxygen photosensitization and weakly coupled floppy complexes. This work has the brain in the hands of Dr. Shuming Bei, who is in Duke, Duke right now. He was a postdoc in my group for three years, and he did a lot of work on these reactions, developing methods and making the computations to get the, those rates. The master reaction that I want to talk about is this one here. You have a complex of a molecule A and B, in each one in the triplet state. And then, after some time, this change through internal conversion into uh, A and B, each one in a singlet state. This process is a triplet fusion and is a spin exchange internal conversion, a general class of reactions having triplet fusion and singlet fission as, a particular, uh, as particular cases. In the case of the singlet fission, what we have is the A and B monomers becoming triplets N and B. Then from this uh, master reaction, we have A and B that's a complex and is a loosely bound complex for this reason it's floppy and it has initial and final states of a very small diabat coupling so it's a weakly coupled complex and it's a challenge for computational modeling there's no single transition state it has many conformations and it has an open shell ground state this general reaction it can get as a uh, real life case this format here where you have the photosensitizer in the triplet state reacting with a ground state oxygen that's a triplet and rendering a singlet ps plus a singlet oxygen ps is the photosensitizer then as i said before is obtained through an excitation and then an intersection crossing to the triplet state Xu Ming's and mine research program involves taking a thiothymines as prototype PS and address all aspects of the singlet oxygen, starting from the excitation, from the ground state to the excited singlet state as N, and then the relaxation of the photosensitizer to the triplet state, and then uh, the triplet state intrinsic decay that's the one without forming the singlet oxygen, just returning to the ground state of the, of the photosensitizer. And finally, the formation of the singlet oxygen, that's the interaction of the triplet states and to form the singlet states. These two first steps, uh, they are basically conventional. I want to discuss them in this talk. You may know them uh, more about them these two papers uh, signed here and I'm going straight to the last two points the first one I'm going to discuss in this first part of the talk the second and the second part the first one that I'm going to discuss is the triplet state intrinsic decay without forming the uh, singlet oxygen so let's go to the part one triplet state intrinsic decay There are tens of photosensitizers synthesized and characterized in the last decades, and they always uh, this is always done to maximize the singlet oxygen yield 
target cell selectivity, toxicity, price, and all these features that are important for pharmaceuticals and for chemistry. And thionucleobases emerge as a potential candidate for phototherapy. They have a quite high singlet oxygen yield, like 0.69 for uh, 6 other two thiothiamine. And sometimes it's interesting, low singlet oxygen yield can be good too, especially when thiothiamines, they are used as a carcinogenic, uh, as immunosuppressants. And in this case, the singlet oxygen, you have a carcinogenic carcinogenic effects, and it's interesting to reduce the produced, uh, production of them. So we're looking at ways of controlling these uh, features. Look at this picture here, that's this intrinsic decay of the triplet. The triplet is the blue curve, and it has uh, two minima and the intersystem crossing point when the triplet crosses the singlet. The first minimum is, has a, a bolt geometry, out of plane, uh, distortion of the ring. The sec mi second minimum has the thiophene out of plane. Then, from the lowest minimum, we have a first step that should uh, populate the second minimum, and from there, I have a second step to the intersystem, intersystem crossing itself. The intrinsic tri uh, triplet decay may be used to control the, the, the singlet oxygen yield. Imagine two situations. The first one is the following. I have uh, the ring distorted uh, minimum very uh, lower, much lower than the, the, the non-planar minimum. Then the, this passage between the minimum is the uh, rate determining step. On the other hand, if I have um, a more stable S uh, non planar minimum, then it becomes the rate determining step to make the intersystem crossing. In the left side, in the, in the first case, the long, I have a long T1 lifetime that leads to a switch on singlet oxygen, while in the second one, I have a short T1 lifetime that switches off the singlet oxygen because there's no time to form the, 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 the singlet oxygen. To compute these rates, the rate for, for the intersystem, intersystem crossing, you can approach that in a very simple way using a semi-classical uh, Marcus model, like this one. You have two, parabol two par uh, parabolas for the, for, 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 for the potential energies, and knowing the height of the barrier to the crossing and the inner shell uh, reorganization energy, I can estimate the, cro the crossing or the rate in this way here. And the same classical Ma uh, Marcus model will be valid if both states share similar frequencies of the coupling mode and the frequency of the coupling mode is much smaller than KT so it should be smaller than the 200 uh, wave numbers. The reorganization energy of the solvent should be negligible compared to the, uh, for, for in this case, so that's pretty good approximation for internal conversion in, light, in, in, in large molecules. And the enthalpy and the entropy should be uh, the same in T1 and S0, so they tend to cancel out in the inverted region. To compute the couplings, you have a good program to do so very fast, very efficiently. That's the uh, PySoc that you can get at newtonx.org. And using all this data, you can get the, the rates for the intrinsic de uh, triplet decay rate. Look at the comparison between the theory, the, the red data and the experimental data, the black data there in the table for a few different thionucleobases. Uh, You're in the, right, in the right place. It's not really a fully quantitative ag agreement, but given uh, all the level of approximations you have, it's really a ve very good. I'm very happy with those results, especially because you can predict pretty well the, the order of magnitude of the, of, of the rates. This is an interesting detail here. If you look at experimental data, 
uh, the tri triplet decay ratio between the, the rate for a tiny nucleoside and tiny nuclear base is 14 times for uh, thiotimine and two times for thioguanosine. It means that the rate is much larger in the case of the purine than in the case of the of the uh, sorry, it's much larger in the case of the purine or pyrimidine than in the case of the purine. And the reason for that, at least that was our hypothesis, is that this effect is due to interactions between the sugar and the sulfur. The sugar functionalization in a, in a, a in thiotimine should be uh, can be used to control the triplet decay rate. Again, the theory provides quite nice agreement to the experiment, and based on this nice agreement, we even designed our own molecule. You are thinking, okay, so if this uh, effect is due to interaction between the sugar and the sulfur, if we maximize the interaction, for instance, by adding a methyl group to the sugar to have a lot of interaction with the, with the sulfur, you should have a huge uh, effect in the difference between the nucleobase and the nucleoside. And as a matter of fact, yes, our prediction, there's no experimental uh, confirmation yet, but the prediction, prediction is that over 200 times different. And then you can understand the difference between uh, thiotimine and thioguanine. Uh, it's because in the case of the uh, purine, you have amino group intercaling, intercaling and making the uh, distancing the thiophene from uh, and the sugar, so they don't interact so much. So we saw how is the triplet state intrinsic decay without forming uh, the, the singlet oxygen. And you saw that for a particular case of the thionucleobases. In the next part of this talk, I'm going to discuss the singlet oxygen formation itself.